experimentation, some exploration of our information. And with that, leading us through, in times of uncertainty, are you prepared? A uh, big round of silent applause for Bashir Khan. Hey, good morning, Ed. Thanks for having me on this. Uh, let me share my screen and get going here. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Uncertainty Planning webinar. It's the first time we're all doing this. Uh, I guess I should also say good afternoon for those folks who are joining us from the East Coast. Uh, two weeks ago, I did not uh, know that I'd be presenting today, so this is the first time we're all trying this. It's almost as uncertain as uh, many of us would not have imagined working from home these days. So. Uh, I'm with Connects Technology. I actually founded the company in 2013, and I'm also an ACE director uh, with my fellow ACE director, Edward and Opal, who are also going to be presenting today. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. Uh, as I said, this is the first time we have not rehearsed it, so if there's some topics that seem to overlap, you'd know why. In terms of the agenda, I just thought I'd walk you through who we are as a company, a little bit more about EPM, specifically the Oracle Enterprise uh, plan, uh, Performance Management Suite of Oracle, and then we'll talk about some what if scenarios. And uh, indeed, we'll have some time for Q&A. If I cannot answer any questions uh, that you pose, there's an amazing panel coming up after me, and I'm sure they will be able to answer your questions. So about Connects, as I mentioned, we uh, founded in 2013, and uh, we've done over 27 successful projects across multiple pillars. Uh, we've even done international implementations, including EPM. We have uh, worked across nine different industries, and we have three global offices, uh, one here in the US, uh, one in Malaysia, and one in India. Um, we have supported across uh, 19 different countries implementation of these Oracle Cloud application. Uh, the implementation we've done spanned 19 different countries. And the total years of collective implementation experience in our organization is about 300 man years. Jumping to the EPM, how it evolved over time, and I'm sure many of us have gone through uh, yourselves uh, have seen this happen over the years. Um, I actually started working with Oracle technology in the 80s. So I very well remember how planning was done those days. Um, Lotus 1, 2, 3, I don't know if you guys remember that. And then in the 90s, we had one of the most powerful um, technologies that came into existence, Hyperion in particular, and still exists embedded in the EPM suite that I'm going to talk about. So what's evolved from paper-based planning to spreadsheets to Hyperion, and then moving into the GUI or Windows-based experience, user experience uh, with planning engines is now a uh, staple with Oracle in terms of uh, software as a service. Uh, it's become the new standard. Many organizations are planning to use it. I'm, I'm assuming many of you are already using it, and uh, I'm hoping the rest of you will plan to adopt this technology. So for those who are not familiar with the product, uh, it's a very comprehensive platform. Uh, it has many different business processes and it's sort of modular. So you could start with one of the processes, automate that and then move on to the other processes. And there's a lot of best practice content that Oracle's already put together, sharing from experiences they've had with implementing this across different organizations globally. So you could leverage uh, that uh, best practice content for your own organization. So I mentioned business processes. There are seven different aspects uh, to these. Uh, the specific one we're going to be talking about today is the planning component. But then, as you can see, there are six other aspects, uh, six other business processes that can help your organization. I want to briefly touch on each one. So in case you're not familiar with the other uh, products, uh, this may be a good um, session to share what each one is capable of. And also, uh, those of you familiar with the product suite may know that over the years it has evolved. 
And the way it has been uh, put together today is very um, intuitive and you're able to modularize and pick whatever you need and then continue to leverage it moving forward. So first planning. The planning component known as uh, PVCS, Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service. Uh, there's also an aspect called EPVCS, Enterprise Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service. So the E uh, aspect, EPVCS uh, module is something Oracle has uh, the best practices incorporated. So if you do not want to use that, you can use the standard planning and budgeting PVCS cloud service. So this is what the majority of the organizations we've worked with have used. Uh, it enables you to start off, create uh, plans that um, are long range plans. You can do rolling forecasts over several months, years. Uh, you can plan across different lines of business. You can um, collaborate with different uh, departments, uh, divisions to roll up your plans. Very versatile, very powerful. Not only does it come with a user interface that's web-based, you can also connect to the same planning engine through Excel, uh, which many of us know using a plugin called SmartView. It's uh, well liked and well used by majority of the FP&A teams, uh, financial planning and analysis teams across the globe. So regardless of who you are uh, in your organization, what role you play, uh, you can use this for finance, for sales, for marketing, for HR operations, supply chain, IT, doesn't matter which department, every one of you can leverage this planning engine. And for today's presentation, in terms of the waters, I'm gonna specifically focus on this aspect of this business process uh, from the EPM suite. I'll quickly review the remaining six um, business processes. The second one I'm going to talk about is the financial consolidation and close. Uh, it's particularly useful for organizations who have uh, global presence, they have uh, uh, multiple offices, multiple locations, distributed finance teams that are working with their own ledgers and finances. So it, it provides a very uh, comprehensive uh, overview of uh, what's happening across your enterprise, who is uh, uh, having difficulties with the close, uh, are there reconciliation issues in different uh, locations, how you can zero in on the challenges uh, the teams are facing and help them with the close process. Not only that, it also allows you then to consolidate and present the numbers uh, cohesively for the entire organization. You could do translations with multi-currency. It uh, just helps you orchestrate the close process very efficiently and uh, be able to collect any supplemental data that you need uh, to complete your flows. There's a business process called account reconciliation that helps you reconcile the general ledgers to the sub ledgers. So you can streamline your entire reconciliation process. You can manage this from a global perspective and ensure that the integrity of your uh, close uh, and consolidations maintained by having effective recon reconciliation with the underlying subledges. This is a great module to look at your um, enterprise from a profitability and cost standpoint. It uh, ensures you to specifically dive into modeling your profitability and you can uh, base it on segments and uh, especially if you're ha having straight services, you can leverage this module to uh, stay on top of your profitability across your enterprise. Uh, in particular, I'd say in these times, this probably is a very good module to uptake if you're not already using this in your organization. Um, tax reporting is a very uh, powerful module. Uh, it's one of the newer uh, modules that's, uh, or rather I'd say it's a module that Oracle is constantly improving with the changing regulations globally. Uh, it comes with uh, capabilities to look at every country's uh, regulations and compliance requirements. It has the capability to do country by country reporting to basically uh, look at all aspects of what each country needs, roll up the uh, data and provide a very uh, transparent framework that allows your uh, finance teams to align with your tax teams and also to present this to the tax auditors. So especially for organizations who are operating globally, great module and uh, it really helps with um, tax compliance and reporting. Uh, this is one of the modules I really like. Uh, we 
after we compile all the numbers, spend a lot of time extracting them, making them presentable, either putting them in PowerPoint slides or creating board reports. This module helps you uh, create um, reports that are very um, you, business friendly, very easy for the management ups, uh, uptake. Uh, it's almost like from the yesteryears, the mail merge capability where you have uh, narratives with uh, metrics or numbers embedded within great module. Uh, it goes hand in hand with the tracks reporting module. So another good one where you can collaboratively uh, define the reports, author them, review them together, and then finally publish them for management and regulatory purposes. And lastly, the enterprise data management business process. This helps you have a single source of truth. Uh, you're able to extract uh, and uptake information from multiple different sources, uh, pulling that all in, uh, making it available across all these other business processes that I um, described earlier. It also helps you visualize your data across your enterprise. Um, it's just um, a very important tool, uh, especially if you have uh, disparate systems and you have large amounts of data that needs to be pulled in uh, to be consolidated across uh, your organization. Uh, it's a very intuitive and easy to use tool. Oh, also more importantly, there's an aspect here, and I'm sure many of you who already use this system would relate to, that um, the data typically that we deal with is hierarchical and there's, con there's constant change. There's, uh, things you want to move around in your hierarchy. And this product helps you easily manage that to align your hierarchy with your business as you move. So those are the seven different business processes that are included in the Oracle EPM product suite. So not only does this product bring all these uh, allow you to automate all these processes. It works very nicely with the rest of the Oracle's um, cloud application suite. So it's connected with um, uh, the ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Suite. It's connected with your supply chain, HCM, uh, sales from a customer experience standpoint. So it indeed is uh, it's at the core of uh, your enterprise. It's able to uh, interact with all these different aspects of your system. So you can uh, have a 360 degree view of your organization with a well-connected system. So it plays very nicely with the rest of the software as a service products that Oracle has. So that was my introduction or an overview of the EPM suite. Apologies to those who have already um, used it, are using it, are very familiar with it. But I thought because we have a mixed audience here, maybe some of you have not seen it before. So I hope that was useful. With that, let's talk about some aspects of a well-designed model. And again, this may be rudimentary for some of you, but um, just wanted to cover that. So a well-designed model or a good model is one in which you have a detailed uh, model for your revenue. Uh, you're basing it on uh, various uh, metrics or drivers. You, you're basing it on units of information that pertain to your business. You are overlaying it with aspects of seasonality or anything that may impact your business. Uh, key factors. One of them is indeed what's happening in today's environment. So that could be one of the factors you indeed need to model, not just for today, but in future too, right? So that's one aspect of your planning model. And indeed, hand in hand with the revenue, those expenses, uh, direct expenses, overheads, any expense costs uh, that are driver-based or trend-based, so you, you have to model all your costs. Uh, one of the biggest aspects in many organizations is the uh, labor costs, the personnel costs. So a good model, again, has to have a uh, detailed level planning from an HR perspective. Um, the EPM suite lends itself to model this either at the department level where you're just um, modeling it based on number of headcounts in that department. So it's summarized. Or the better way to model it is actually go down to the individual employee or positions, actually best practices positions rather than do it by employee. And then for that position, determine the comp, uh, the taxes, the 
um, bonuses, every every aspect of it. You can literally do a very detailed plan and the product lends itself very well to enable such modeling. Uh, you can also model uh, to be hired positions uh, that can, uh, and all aspects of the to be hired positions will indeed travel with them in, when you're doing what else, when you're moving the position to a different department or, um, you know, you're removing that position, all aspects of that position would immediately travel with it. Again, in a well-designed model, that should happen. It shouldn't be that you're going and defining the comp for it to be had, and then it does not eliminate any taxes or other overheads that may be associated with that position. Um, from a balance sheet standpoint, those were uh, the PL planning aspects, and then from balance sheet, you can uh, in a well-defined model, you have to ensure that all aspects of balance sheet are covered. Uh, depreciation is an important thing, so you need to be able to uptake any uh, tables you may already have defined on your finance system. You should be able to add, uh, again, from a water standpoint, what happens when you add more assets to your organization or do more capital projects. All those should be, you should be able to accommodate that in a well-defined model. Uh, cash flows, most critical. Again, in these times, many of us who own businesses are carefully watching that and making sure that uh, we're able to sustain and survive and get past this situation. So uh, you should be able to um, introduce uh, assumptions, change assumptions, and see how it's going to impact your business and how your cash flow is going to look. Most important, you need the ability uh, to keep on top of what's really happening. So as much as you have these models, they're great. You can review them, you can uh, revise them, you can forecast them, you can do what ifs. But it's critical that you are constantly matching that against what's actually happening. There should be feeds of actual information coming back at the level of granularity that you're looking for. Um, say, from a finance standpoint, most systems are able to accommodate, but there may be aspects like uh, Payroll, you may, you should be able to import all your payroll data and make sure you match it to the position and see what's happening. From that standpoint, there are organizations that do planning by spend to the vendors, the organizations do planning by projects. So regardless of the level at which you're planning, you should be able to incorporate actual information so you can compare, uh, not just for reporting, but more importantly for uh, planning and uh, adjusting these plans based on uh, how the actual, uh, what's happening in real life. You need to be able to align yourself with that. So um, in short, it's critical that you are able to make changes uh, that show the impact. These changes should be made either top down or bottom up. You, uh, you make it at the lowest level, you, you're able to roll it up and see what the impact is, or you want to introduce uh, that, say for example, I just want my cost to be X, this month and see how the trickle downs uh, and how it impacts your profitability and cash flow. Uh, as I've told you, we've never done this before. I just did not know the audience we're going to have here. So in case you are already familiar with all these concepts, uh, my apologies, but for those folks who uh, this is new, I hope it's helpful. So with that said, let's uh, look into how exactly the Oracle EPM uh, product suite can help. Um, so everything I said in the well-designed model is easily accommodated in the Oracle's uh, product suite, specifically in the planning and budgeting um, module and the planning module. You're able to go and define all aspects. You're able to do planning at the, the PNL level, namely you can get as granular as you want. Uh, from a revenue and expense standpoint, you may have multiple lines of business. You may have different assumptions you make. You can create any number of assumptions and drivers that roll up the revenue. Uh, the same thing could be done at the expense level. And similarly, on the uh, balance sheet side, you can define all your liabilities and your assets and roll that up to see how the balance sheet looks. So you can do balance sheet level planning, uh, p &L planning in your uh, planning product. As I mentioned earlier, there's also an enterprise planning and budgeting module that's available where Oracle has taken the lead and they have created the best practices uh, model where you just need to uh, align it with your business and then 
feed in the data and the charts, the dashboards, the uh, different tools that you need to complete your plan already pre-built and available to you. And they're constantly updating this over time. So in terms of uh, what if, uh, what you're able to achieve is once you finalize your budget at uh, the beginning of the year or what, whenever your budget cycle is, you're able to establish that, that as a controlled version or a final published version. And then there's any number of scenarios that you can create from that point. Most organizations have uh, leveraged that capability to uh, have multiple scenarios, essentially from a forecasting standpoint. So they start with the initial budget and every month they're able to uh, adjust that based on what's actually happened and create a new snapshot of the forecast as to how the year would end. And uh, each month they're creating forecasts for each, uh, each period as you progress forward. What's uh, useful about this feature is in times like now, you're able to create any number of scenarios to determine how you can, uh, how you need to react to what may be happening. Uh, you can create a what if scenario today and based on some information that comes in over the next couple of weeks, you can create a different scenario. So you can have multiple scenarios. In fact, in the poll that just happened, it, we saw that some of you have multiple plans already created. So this tool would help you take whatever you sat down together and decided and plan to actually create um, a model that shows you how your organization is going to be impacted from a finance standpoint. So your what if could be, what if our revenue drops? Your what if could be, what if we are able to control the costs? More importantly, how should we control the costs? Should we control the costs? So all these uh, questions can be answered uh, with this approach. So. Imagine you have your current budget oh, as it stands. You already have your actuals for January, February. And those of you who are really efficient probably already have it closed for March. And then for the rest of the year, you have the forecasted um, model for your revenue, for your cost. And then based on that model, you're able to create different scenarios to see what should we do when or uh, if we did this, what's going to happen. So it's both aspects. So these um, assumptions uh, you can actually introduce in a sandbox environment. What that means is uh, what are the changes you make? You can actually implement them and see what will happen without impacting your actual systems. You still have your uh, current uh, budget, uh, all the plans in place with the forecast and the actuals in place, but you just create a sandbox and introduce all these measures, implement them and see what actually transpires. So those are sandboxes that are available to you. So the best thing about this is all the changes you're making, and by the way, it's collaborative, it's not one person or just the FBNA team who's doing this. You could actually have a planning session across the enterprise, involve all stakeholders, involve all your division heads, and they can all participate and they all understand how a change and on one side of the organization can impact the other. But everyone is looking at that single version, single source of truth, and all changes you make are uh, tracked. And most of all, uh, it's all um, in a central database. It's not in disconnected Excel workbooks, uh, which some of us have used in the past, and we know how, what happens when some of those links break and they present an incorrect picture to one individual. You don't even realize it till it's too late. So with uh, aligning ourselves to one central location of all this information and being able to collaborate all the enterprise, it makes the process more efficient to do these uh, what if analysis. So that, that's the concept behind how EPM can help. Um, we did not have a lot of time to prepare. It's actually, I believe last week that uh, Edward tweeted that we're gonna have this webinar and I jumped in and said, let's do it. So uh, this is something we just quickly put together just to illustrate a point. So we just thought, let's take an example, uh, assume there's a pharma company, that they're, they're providing two types of injections. Uh, these are used uh, typically for cataract operations. I don't know how applicable it is to you, but just as an example, assume there are uh, two different uh, solutions that are provided. And as you can see in yellow, those are the drivers that are uh, driving the budgeted revenue. 
So we have two lines um, uh, over here, uh, and we're looking at the total revenue, the 650 from one product and four to uh, K in another product. Now, assume that due to business conditions, and we just start to see that the second one is not selling as expected, and we want to understand what will happen, or how it will impact uh, our organization if we eliminate the product. I'm sure you are able to correlate this to your own lines of business. So what we then do is simply go into the revenue model. By the way, this is all Excel based. So this is an Excel sheet. We simply go and type in all the zeros to eliminate that uh, volume of sale. And so at the top, you're entering the zeros, click a button, the bottom, you see that that revenue has turned to zero. And we're gonna call this as a water scenario pass one. And as I said, you can have any number of version. I'm just giving an example of how you're reducing the revenue to see what happens. The moment you do this, or one of your division managers does this, immediately across the enterprise, you're looking at a roll-up of how that revenue got impacted. You can actually compare it. the working version is the uh, control version that I talked about, where that's your uh, current budget with all the correct projections, but then you're comparing it to the scenario. Again, if you notice it's Excel based, if you look at the top, you could look at a consolidated uh, perspective or you could look at for a specific department or a specific product. So you have the flexibility to slice and dice and visualize the impact in terms of numbers using a familiar tool like Excel. So based on that change we did, you'd see that the revenue dropped by that amount uh, that we eliminated for a 2K. But what's interesting is that um, we see that the variable cost goes down more than the revenue. So you see that change in revenue resulted in a 638K reduction in variable costs. So you come to the realization it's probably this product was a loss leader. It costs you more to produce that to actually uh, than the amount you're going to get selling it. So there's a 236K reduction because of that change. So that single product being removed has a significant impact to your bottom line. What's not important is, um, or rather let me put it this way, this spreadsheet looks simple. Yes, I, you'd say I can write formulas to enable that, but where it's really uh, impactful or very um, efficient is it's all wired and connected together. Every aspect, every line, every metric that you have entered, every data point that's there is wired together, connected uh, in a very simple, seemingly simple manner for us, but behind the scenes, extremely complex engineering. So that degree of uh, flexibility where you can change any aspect, be it a driver or a metric or an actual amount, and for that, within seconds to roll up and present the impact is what makes this product powerful. Yes, of course, we can all thrive off of Excel sheets, uh, but to leverage a product like this, you have the complete flexibility to determine what aspects of your budget and plan uh, you wish to change and what the impact would be, and it's instantly available uh, to you to uh, figure out how to react based on a certain condition. Uh, we've also seen situations where certain organizations, despite having such a powerful tool, uh, because of the way it was implemented or because the team is not very familiar with all aspects, still depend on extracting all the information. Of course, they use it for planning, they share it with division heads, department heads, they roll up the plans. But we've seen several instances where after that happens, they are actually downloading everything to Excel, disconnected sheets, uh, you know, uh, creating uh, silos of information and using those for their subsequent forecast and reporting purposes. Uh, highly recommend you don't do that. The system is very well engineered. It's capable of creating everything you need. Uh, probably they did not consider looking at the narrative reporting module, for example. That's the reason why they have this disconnect spreadsheet. So uh, across that suite of uh, business processes that I shared with you, you uh, you will be able to address every need your business has. And it has been done. There are many organizations using it. So I just want to stress that because we have seen several instances of that. 
But uh, coming back to this what if example, I just wanted to share one aspect, but uh, you could uh, relate this to your own organization. You can create more what ifs, and that's the power of this product. Um, did not necessarily have a lot of time to go over many of the scenarios, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what's possible. I thought I'll end with this. Uh, it's, uh, last year, Oracle partnered with um, Velocity. Uh, uh, it's a marketing research company that uh, went across 500 different organizations and did a survey to determine what, what is the value of a product like uh, Oracle's EPM Suite? And very interesting feedback I thought I'd share with you. Uh, if you look, uh, there's so much um, improvement, significant improvements in how organizations are able to uh, forecast, analyze, uh, how they're able to communicate and collaborate across the enterprise, how they're able to increase uh, the use of forecasting in the product. So these are real numbers. This came from 500 different organizations where the CIOs were interviewed and this is this the result of the market survey done in June of last year. So as much as you see all those improvements, there's uh, several aspects if you see below the line here in terms of how it significantly reduced the amount of time it took for them to complete the period end processing, close the books, um, uh, they were able to uh, generate reports. I, I mean, look at the amount of time. Uh, I mean, the percentage of uh, reduction in use of Excel strategy, 70%, over 70%. That's incredible. Oh, I, I miss mentioning this. Um, on the financial consolidation close, it would automatically uh, create all the adjustments, the elimination entries that you have. That's why you see the metrics on the far right below, over 70%. Again, uh, decrease in manual adjustments because uh, you're able to automate the majority of that process. And in some cases, you don't even need to because it's all accurately balanced out across your different books and then in the enterprise. So uh, I, I thought this was an interesting metric to share with you. Uh, those are all the slides I had. Uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. Uh, uh, here are some contact details of my colleagues. So if you uh, wish to learn more, please feel free to reach out to us. But uh, with that, let me stop and see if there are any questions for me. I believe you can use a Q&A uh, in this uh, webinar. There's an icon that, where you can post questions. I already see one question that's come up. Uh, let's see. So the question is, uh, with sandboxes, can we quickly dump the current main app data into the sandbox and make updates in the sandbox and then quickly push uh, sandbox data back to the main app if those changes are approved? So typically the way sandbox works, and this is uh, prevalent across not just this product, it's also applicable, say for example, if you uh, were using the ERP and you wanted to make changes to the way it looks and feels, same concept. So the way sandbox works is you'll um, enter a sandbox, um, you'll create or establish a sandbox. Uh, when you make changes in the sandbox, it's only visible to you or uh, potentially a group that you have decided to share that with you. So indeed you can do this planning aspects in the sandbox. And the best part is once you complete all those aspects, you can publish the sandbox and immediately it updates. So it's not even a need, there's not even a need to um, extract the information, make a copy of it, and then make the changes and then push it back. It actually, think of it as an overlay, you're doing those in place, but temporarily that only you or a subset of the users are, have the visibility to, and then you're able to publish it back. So there's another, uh, not a question, but a comment. Uh, I've seen the weekly sales forecast modeling and it helps the business be more aligned with the budget. Absolutely, thank you for that, Paulina. It's, uh, uh, I, I'm sure many of you are already using, so I encourage you to uh, share your feedback just like Paulina did. Um, it is extremely powerful and the more you use it, the reali you realize that 
uh, how how much it starts to benefit you. And I, I truly wish and I hope uh, that one, of course, you're all safe and um, well, but uh, I, I really hope that uh, most of you are already using this. Uh, and uh, more importantly, if you're not, uh, I'd encourage you to uptake it, even on from a POC standpoint, a proof of concept, just to try it out. Of course, uh, uh, we some of us may have more time on hand now. Um, in fact, I was talking about this to my colleagues, and perhaps you're seeing this already. Uh, these times are forcing us all to work from home. These are times where, unlike the norm, where we're able to just walk across to a colleague's desk and uh, ask them something or collaborate with them and be able to deliver what we need, you are uh, constrained by your ability to uh, connect uh, physically, you know, so you have to depend on systems, you have to collaborate through technology, just like we are doing in this webinar here. What better time than now to identify the gaps in your business process and identify where your business processes fail, where they were dependent on uh, a person who's your know-all, a go-to person, you have to depend on that person to tell you something. It'll be much more obvious now with this physical separation than when you are all working together. So I feel it's the perfect time for each one of us, our organizations to, uh, you know, look into these process improvements, look into those um, gaps where technology can come in and help you. And uh, from, I'd say of all the modules that are out there, of course you can automate your finance, your HCM, your supply chain and all this, but probably the easiest and which involves many times a small group that does the FPNA and then impacts the larger group in terms of consuming or contributing to the model is the planning and budgeting. So I think it's a perfect time to uptake an aspect at least of this module to identify how you can, if you may already have your plan someplace, you can just simply uh, import them into this engine. Uh, it's um, probably a day or two before Oracle had provisioned it for you. And in the past, Oracle was expensive. Hyperion was expensive. You'd be amazed at how potentially affordable this product is today. So it's as simple as going online, signing up, or working with your sales rep, signing up, just importing this budget data that you have, importing your actuals. Don't even need to automate to start with, but you can start doing this next week. It's not going to be a long drawn out process you can simply import your budget, your actual, start looking at your forecast, start doing this water scenarios next week. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm, as I, I don't know if I told you, but uh, I started working on the Oracle products in 88 and applications in 96. I'm so amazed with how technology has evolved and how easy it's become today than in the yesteryears. So we truly are blessed with the uh, advance of technology to a point, as I said, you could start doing some of these things next week if you want to versus you having to go through an hour the hard depending on the IT team to set it up and make it available to you. Uh, this part in particular is very easy to uptake. So I, I think um, uh, it will benefit all of us. It's something definitely to, con definitely to consider in these times that uh, uh, we, we don't know what the next couple of months bring, but at least uh, it's very, very important that we all plan, uh, prepare for the worst, but uh, uh, you know, hope for the best and prepare for the worst in the coming weeks. Um, there was a follow-up question, but don't you need to enable Sandbox before creating the app? So, uh, you know, I'm not that uh, familiar with uh, exactly the sequencing of the Sandbox creation. I uh, defer that to the experts coming in next, hopefully, um, maybe Edward or one of his team members can specifically answer that question. Uh, so I'll defer that uh, to a later point. Hi, this is, this is Tracy. Um, the answer is yes. Yeah, the, if you're using the sandbox feature within um, the planning cloud, that is something that you set um, at application creation time. Um, so it, that is a true statement. Um, and what 
So what you may end up doing if you want to utilize that is maybe use your test instance. Um, it's pretty easy to kind of stand up a new application and then pull artifacts over so you could create a new app potentially and then pull those artifacts over. Um, but yes, that is a true statement that you do have to create sandboxing. You have to enable sandboxing at the time of application creation. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate that. Uh, guys, any other questions? I believe we have about five or six minutes left or comments. I don't see any more. So thank you again for participating in this. We are hoping to do many more of this, uh, bringing different topics, more experts, and uh, we really appreciate your time. I'll hand it over to Edward uh, at this point. Awesome. Thank you, Bashir. Uh, we're all giving a virtual round of applause and glad to see one of my fellow ACE directors presenting. 